नमस्कार आप सभी का स्वागत है मैं हूं राहुल और आप देख रहे हैं पीएम ई विद्या चैनल्स और एन का ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल हम लेकर हाजिर हैं आज आप सभी जानते हैं शुक्रवार है और दो हफ्ते का समय गुजर चुका है हमारी विशेष श्रृंखला वेबिनार सीरीज लिसनिंग टू लर्न यानी कि सुने और सीखें का आज सैंतीसवा सत्र है जिसे हम लेकर हाजिर है आप सभी के समक्ष हमारे साथ दो खास मेहमान हैं एक खास मेहमान जिनसे आप हमेशा रूबरू होते हैं और एक जो यहाँ पर अपना मत रखने आते हैं एक ऐसे विषय पर जिसकी सार्थकता होती है जिसकी आवश्यकता होती है और जो भारत के लिए सबसे ज्यादा आवश्यक है चाहे वो कोई भी क्षेत्र हो चाहे वो स्वास्थ्य का क्षेत्र हो चाहे वो विकास का क्षेत्र हो और आजकल यदि हम आज एक नए उभरते भारत की बात करें तो आत्मनिर्भर भारत एक ऐसा शब्द है जो हर भारतीय की जुबान पर है और हो भी क्यों ना अभी हाल ही में यदि हम एक सेमिनार जो आयोजित की गई थी जिसका शीर्षक था स्वावलंबन उसमें हमारे यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री जी ने बताया था कि जो भारत का डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट है वो पिछले आठ साल में सात गुना बढ़ गया है यानी कि भारत कितना आत्मनिर्भर बन रहा है ये इस बात की वानगी प्रस्तुत करता है तो ऐसे खास विषय पर हमारी चर्चा करना भी बनता है क्योंकि ये हमारी भी एक नैतिक जिम्मेदारी है मैं राहुल आप सभी का एक बार पुनः स्वागत करता हूँ आज मैं आपको बता दूँ कि वेबिनार सीरीज लिसनिंग टू लर्न में हमारा जो टॉपिक है वो है सेल्फ रिलायंट इंडिया और मटीरियल्स परस्पेक्टिव तो ये आज का हमारा खास विषय है आत्मनिर्भर भारत पदार्थ परिप्रेष्य और हमारे साथ दो खास मेहमान हैं मैं आपका दोनों से परिचय करा देता हूं हमारे साथ हैं डॉक्टर गगन गुप्ता आप एन से ही हैं कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ द प्रोग्राम गगन जी नमस्कार आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है और हमारे साथ है सी एस आई आर एम प्री जिसे आप एडवांस मटेरियल्स एंड प्रोसेस रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट भोपाल के नाम से जानते हैं उसके निदेशक महोदय डॉक्टर ए के श्रीवास्तव जी हैं सर नमस्कार आपका भी बहुत बहुत स्वागत है अभिनंदन है आत्मनिर्भर भारत की एक ऐसी परिकल्पना जिसे साकार करने में हम सभी लगे हुए हैं और तमाम ऐसी चीज़ें हैं जो भारत आज स्वयं आत्मनिर्भर बन रहा है बना रहा है दूसरे देशों पर निर्भर नहीं है तो आप गगन सर से मैं निवेदन करूँगा कि इस सत्र को आगे बढ़ाएँ हमारे जो गेस्ट हैं उनका परिचय हमारे दर्शकों से कराएँ और बताएं कि इस कार्यक्रम की भूमिका को जानना समझना न सिर्फ स्टूडेंट्स के लिए बल्कि टीचर्स के लिए और जो भी स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं इस पूरे प्रोग्राम के उनके लिए कितना आवश्यक है सादर प्रणाम दोस्तों आज हमारे लिए सैतीसवा सत्र है हमारी सीरीज का सैतीसवा सत्र है आप अपने प्रश्न हमेशा की तरह हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल एन ऑफिशियल पर भेज सकते हैं साथ साथ आप अपने प्रश्न सी इंडिया और सी एस भोपाल के यूट्यूब चैनल्स पर भी आप अपने प्रश्न हमें भेज सकते हैं साथ साथ आप हमारे यूट्यूब हमारे ईमेल एड्रेस हैं जो कि अभी स्क्रीन पर फ्लैश किए जाएंगे आप उन पर भी आप हमें अपने प्रश्न भेज सकते हैं अपने सुझाव भेज सकते हैं लगातार सुझाव भेजते रहिए आपके सुझाव हमें इस प्रोग्राम को आगे बढ़ाने में और आगे संचालित करने में बहुत मददगार साबित हो रहे हैं हमें लगातार आप लोगों से संस्तुति मिलती है कि इस तरह के प्रश्न को और इस तरह के जिज्ञासाओं को का समावेशन किया जाए इससे हमें आ, साथ मिलता है ये प्रोग्राम आज हमारा लगभग एक साल पूरे हो रहे हैं और पिछली बार हमने 6 अगस्त 2021 से इस प्रोग्राम की शुरुआत की थी और अब तक छत्तीसवा सेशन हो चुके हैं जिसमें कि हमने विभिन्न विभिन्न प्रकार के लोगों के साथ विभिन्न विभिन्न प्रकार के विषयों पर चर्चा की है चाहे वो फूड हो चाहे वो रॉकेटरी हो चाहे वो प्लानटरी मिशन हों चाहे वो मेडिसिन हो या मटीरियल्स की बात हो इन सब विभिन्न विभिन्न विषयों पर हमने बात की है आज फिर से हमारे साथ डॉक्टर ए के श्रीवास्तव अवनीश कुमार श्रीवास्तव जो कि सी एस आई आर एम पी भोपाल के निदेशक हैं डायरेक्टर हैं आज हमारे साथ हैं उनका एक बहुत लंबा चौड़ा अनुभव है और बहुत लंबी चौड़ी उनके विशेषताएं हैं उनकी क्वालिफिकेशन हैं उन सबके बारे में बात बताऊँगा इससे पहले थोड़ा सा मेटेरियल्स के बारे में हम समझने की कोशिश करें तो साथियों पिछले शताब्दी का पूर्वार्ध लगभग सन 1900 से लेकर 1950 तक केंद्रित रहा एटॉमिक रिसर्च न्यूक्लियर रिसर्च इस पर इसके बाद में दूसरे पूर्वार्ध पिछली शताब्दी के पूर्वार्ध में हमने इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स की क्रांति देखी जिसमें कि हमने कंप्यूटर्स के बदलते हुए स्वरूप देखे मेडिसिन में हमने बहुत सारे सर्जरी के उपयोग देखे पेनिसिलिन से लेकर के हम एंटीबायोटिक्स डिफरेंट एंटीबायोटिक्स तक पहुँच गए एंटीवायरल मेडिसिन तक पहुँच गए इस शताब्दी में और पिछली शताब्दी के आखिर के दिनों से ही ये महसूस किया जाने लगा कि जितने पदार्थ हमारे पास प्रकृति में हमें मिलते हैं वो उनमें विशेषताएं हैं लेकिन जो जिस तरीके की विशेषताएं हमें अलग अलग अनुप्रयोगों के लिए चाहिए उसके लिए हमें मैन मेड या मानव निर्मित पदार्थ चाहिए आज हमारे साथ एक ऐसे ही व्यक्ति हमारे साथ हैं जो कि इन सब विषयों पर आप हमें विस्तार से बताएंगे कि किस तरह से मेटेरियल रिसर्च में प्रगति हो रही है और इस 
आज इस मटेरियल रिसर्च को आप इस तरह से थोड़ा सा समझ सकते हैं बहुत गुड़ शब्दों में कि रफली सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल फंडिंग ऑन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट गोज टू मटेरियल साइंस टू फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ न्यू मटेरियल्स वेयर वी कैन हैव द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द मटेरियल्स इन द डिजायर्ड फैशन वी कैन टेलर द मटेरियल्स इट इज ऐसा लगता है कि आज से बीस साल के बाद या अभी से शुरुआत भी हो चुकी है कुछ कुछ जगहों पर लेकिन आज से बीस साल के बाद जिस तरह से कि हम किसी टेलर शॉप पर जाते हैं और कहते हैं कि आप मेरे नाप का कपड़ा सिल दीजिए और उस कपड़े में ये ये विशेषताएं हों और आज से कुछ वर्षों के बाद कुछ दशकों के बाद हम इस स्थिति में आने के लिए तत्पर हैं जिसमें कि एक कोई इंडस्ट्रियस्ट किसी रिसर्च साइंटिस्ट के पास जाए और कहे कि मुझे इस तरह का मटेरियल चाहिए कि जिसमें इसकी इतनी इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी हो इतनी डक्टिलिटी हो ये मैकेनिकल इसकी स्ट्रेंथ हो ये इलेक्ट्रिकल प्रॉपर्टीज हों एंड सो फार सो ऑन तो इस सब तरीके की बात करने के लिए आज डॉक्टर श्रीवास्तव हमारे साथ हैं जो कि हमें मेटेरियल रिसर्च के बारे में अपडेट करेंगे थोड़ा और उसके बाद मुख्यतः हमारे देश में इसके लिए क्या क्या प्रयास चल रहे हैं और हमारा देश इस स्तर पर क्या क्या कर पाया है इस सब के बारे में हमें आत्मनिर्भर बनाने के लिए इस क्षेत्र में क्या क्या विकास हो रहे हैं क्या क्या शोध कर रहे हो रहे हैं इन सब के बारे में बताएंगे तो इस भूमिका के साथ मैं आपका आपका प्रोफेसर श्रीवास्तव के साथ थोड़ा सा परिचय कराना चाहता हूं। हूँ फ्रेंड डॉक्टर ए के श्रीवास्तव इज करेंटली द डायरेक्टर ऑफ काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च लेबोरेटरी एट भोपाल विच इज कॉल्ड एडवांस मटेरियल्स एंड प्रोसेस रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट डॉक्टर श्रीवास्तव इज एन आउटस्टैंडिंग प्रोफेसर एट द एकेडमी ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इनोवेटिव रिसर्च गाजियाबाद विच इज एन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस प्रोफेसर श्रीवास्तव हैज अर्न हिज मास्टर्स डिग्री इन फिजिक्स फ्रॉम द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी रुड़की Masters in Technology in Material Science from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and Dr. Shivasav holds the PhD degree from Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru, in Metallurgy. So this shows the diversity and the dynamicity in Professor Shivasav. Dr. Shivasav has research interests in diverse areas, including materials processing and characterization, semiconductor sciences, nanostructured materials, and green engineered composites. all front line areas he has more than 350 research publications to his credit with more than 11000 citations a very huge and uh, number which gives us a feeling of pride he has more than 15 patents to his credit and almost identical number of know how transfers uh, in his credit dr shivasav has also edited several books in diverse areas he has guided more than a dozen doctoral theses He is also serving as a chief editor of the journal, which is called Applied Innovative Research. Dr. Shivasav is presently the president of Electron Microscope Society of India, popularly called EMSI. He has also been instrumental in establishing new research facilities at CSIR's National Physical Laboratory (NPL), New Delhi, and of course at MP Bhopal. These include. high resolution transmission electron microscopy which is called hrtem electron energy loss spectroscopy eels and indigenous raman spectrometer with two versions called indiram ctr 300 and ctr 150 under the leadership of professor ek shivasav csir mp has developed several products we will know all about all those products today in today's session however to brief this list includes x ray radiation shielding concrete tiles and other composite materials like red mud and brine sludge bamboo composite parali composite etc professor shivasa has also been instrumental in organizing various events of traditional craft and artisan meets a huge diversity in his interest and in his career his international collaborations with argon and brookhaven national laboratories and united states technical university dramaster germany department of energy italy etc are have been a matter of pride for our indian scientific community Dr. Avni Shivasava has several awards in his name. A few of them are the Metallurgist of the Year award by the Ministry of Steel, Government of India, MRSI Medal, 
INSA COSEF Fellowship, Voscast Fellowship, NRDC, and so on. Dr. Shivasava has also been a member of several committees such as TIFEC, Bureau of Indian Studies, Indian Standards, BIS, and a standing scientific advisory group by the Ministry of Mines, Government of India. Such a huge, such a dynamic person is with us. We are really privileged to have you, Dr. Shivasa, in our studios. It's all yours. Welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gagan Gupta and your colleagues for inviting me for today's lecture at National Council of Educational Research and Training. Um, I'm going to talk on self-reliant India, a material perspective, as Professor Gagan Gupta just mentioned. Uh, Hindi mein hum kehte hain Aat Mirvar Bharat, Padarth Parpiksh. When we, when we say Aat Mirvar Bharat, we always remember the date, 13th May 2020, when our, our Honorable Prime Minister said that country has to become self-reliant. And five pillars of those self-reliance is economy. Economy, he says, economy should grow with a quantum jump, not like an incremental growth. And you all know that he has targeted for the five trillion US dollar economy. Infrastructure, that becomes the identity of modern India. Demography, we all know. We have vibrational demography from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. We should have technology-driven system and demand a good supply chain. So when we talk about Atmirbhar Bharat, self-reliant, then it is also important to synchronize this with the evolution of industry 1.0 to 4.0. Without going into the past, which industry 1.0, the mechanical production started in late 18th century. The, we are now in the era of industry 4.0, that is digital transformation where we talk about the artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, 3D printing, IOTs, big data, and so on. And industry 5.0 is on doorstep where man has to work alongside with robots. Now, what is the role of materials in the Admirbar Bharat? Materials for self-reliant is very important because whatever you make, whatever products you make, I'll show you some of the technologies this, this lecture is full of video clippings. You will enjoy, I hope. So materials for self-reliant, for promoting the original exploratory research, pioneer engineering materials, and integrate with industries and society to contribute towards the building of the nation. And when we contribute towards the building of the nation, we can definitely become the Admirbar. Now, sustainability of materials is very important. It has got five levers to minimize materials impact, that is lifetime extension, dematerialization, substitution, recovery, and manufacturing efficiency, where we talk about additive manufacturing and so on, those things. Now, the materials which I am going to talk, and the technology is out of those materials, is in following fields, metals and polymers, like aluminum metal matrix composites, for brake drum, for automobile industries, aluminum foam for crash worthiness, shape memory alloys, shape memory polymers. In civil infrastructure, you have radiation shielding, concrete, cement free concrete road, hybrid wood substitute, bamboo composite. In environment, basically to use waste to wealth. Waste product, you, uh, you convert it into a useful product. That is red mud and fly ash utilization into value added products utilization of marble waste into wood substitute, and agro waste like parali to convert into useful composites. And then next generation materials, very important thing. And processes like nanomaterials, graphene-based nanomaterials, 3D printing, and so on. Now first example, a case study I'm going to show you here, that advanced cement-free fly ash-based geopolymeric concrete. You know fly ash, it, it is a waste of thermal power plants, and it comes out millions of tons, and its utilization is still under question. And India generates about 196 million ton fly ash per year. We have converted this fly ash into the cement-free concrete, 
because when you produce cement, equal amount of CO2 is also produced, which is not good for environment. That is one disadvantage. Then fly ash is a waste. So you are converting waste into the value added products. The salient features are it's 100% replacement of cement, water curing free process, ready for use within a week, whereas cement concrete, if you use, it takes about 28 days or a month. And bulk fly ash waste utilization, so you are using converting waste into the value-added products, and it's environmental friendly process. We have constructed a road, a small patch, in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhopal, just for uh, demonstration purpose. Uh, it's, it was in the year 2017 sometime, and it's working very well. Now, another waste product from the industry is a red mud which comes out from the, uh, your alumina industries. When you convert this um, oh, bauxite ore into alumina using bias process, then this red mud comes out. And this red mud is almost equal amount of the alumina, which is coming out. So this is another waste product. And this red mud problem is that it has a very high alkalinity. So it's uh, hazardous for health. It's not environmental friendly. We have converted this red mud into radiation shielding tiles. And now you'll be happy to know that Dr. Harshwardhan, the cabinet minister that time, <coughs> he came, sorry, 13th March 2021, and he inaugurated the Center for Advanced Radiation Shielding and Geopolymeric Materials. This is a unique center in the country. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the unique center in the world. On that basis, we also first time AMPRI received the National Research Development Corporation, NRDC, National Meritorious Invention Award. On that occasion, we made a video clipping. I'll just share with you this video clipping, which will summarize about the entire process, what we have done, and what we have achieved during this entire work. CSIR Advanced Materials and Process Research Institute, in short CSIR M3 at Bhopal, has been working on the development of non-toxic and lead-free material to protect high energy radiation shielding, which can be applicable from health to the strategic sectors. Mainly, CSIR M3's expertise lies on the conversion of industrial waste like red mud, fly ash, rice husk, brine sludge, etc., into radiation shading materials by arresting their hazardous nature in a scientific manner. Billion tons of such noxious industrial waste have been piled up in the disposal plants worldwide and pose serious threat to the environment due to particulate emission, alkalinity, heavy metal leaching, etc. CSIR MP Bhopal had transferred a technology on lead-free X-ray shielding tiles to Messrs. Prince Johnson Limited on 10th June 2019 at Ansandhan Bhavan, New Delhi, in gracious presence of Dr. Shekhar C. Mande, Honorable Director General of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR and Secretary Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR, to the government of India. CSIR Ampli has developed this novel material using the industrial waste to shield X-rays that comes out of the diagnostic X-rays, computerized tomography, CT scanner, cath lab, etc. Nearly 6 mm thick material causes the attenuation characteristic of 1 mm lead sheet. Since lead causes a serious environmental hazard, its uses is being discouraged world over. This technology is nearly three times cheaper than the lead, hence we use industrial waste as raw material. The radiation shielding material developed by CSIR and Bhopal was accredited by Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, that is AERB of Government of India, and it has been reported 
as an alternative material of toxic lead to shielding high energy x-ray photon. Recently, Mr. Saidi Felkier and Research Private Limited, Ahmad Nagar, Maharashtra, has used CSIR MP technology to cover the wall of their three X-ray diagnostic rooms. One CT scan room and one cat lab. And totally, it's about 2,500 square feet. Tiles were utilized and it has been tested and approved by ARD. I am happy to say that giant free X-ray shielding tiles are being made at pilot scale at Mr. Chris Johnson in collaboration with CSIR and Bhopal. On 13th March 2021, Dr. Harshwazan Ji, Honorable Union Minister of Science and Technology, Health and Family Welfare, Earth Sciences, and Vice President of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, inaugurated the Center for Advanced Radiation Shielding and Geopolymeric Materials. On this occasion, Sri Sudipko Saha, President of Operation of Mrs. Prince Johnson, did mention that lead-free X-ray shielding red mud tiles, the product launch will be very soon, maybe within a month or so. Accordingly, we hope that our red mud radiation shielding tiles will be in market very soon. Thank you. Dhanavad. Yeah. So another um, uh, series of uh, technologies which we have developed and it's very important for the country. Uh, these are import substitutes also on hybrid green composite materials. I'll tell you some of the case studies. And the challenges are basically at present we have the challenges like find alternate materials for timber, uh, GRP plastics, avoid deforestation, so in this regard, I'll show you one example, agro-waste parali, which at least the uh, Delhi, Punjab, Haryana state people know very well that during the months of October to December to some extent January, parali is being burned. It's a bad extra waste. And uh, uh, there is no taker of parali. We have converted this into 100% conversion into the products like uh, laminates, panels, and it's uh, again the alternate of wood. And the applications of this parali wood is for making door, false ceiling, false tiles, uh, wall tile, partition roofing, furniture, etc. In this regard, we have met um, several officials of Haryana and other states. The, here is the example that meeting with the Honorable Chief Minister of Haryana and uh, then director and IT Kurushet. We have transferred this technology also to Mesa Shub Green Sheet Private Limited. And uh, based on this work, the DST Vigyan Prasar came forward and they made a video clipping for us to popularize this technology uh, in countrywide. And so I would be happy to share this video clipping and I'm sure that uh, you will enjoy this and you will see that how waste can be converted into the product. CSIR की भोपाल स्थित प्रयोगशाला Advanced Materials and Processes Research Institute (AMPRI) तथा NIT कुरुक्षेत्र के वैज्ञानिकों ने धान से निकलने वाली पराली, गेहूं के भूसे और दोगुने अपशिष्ट जैसे फ्लाई एश और मार्बल के कचरे तथा फाइबर का प्रयोग करते हुए फ्लाई और लकड़ी विकसित की है। वैज्ञानिकों के द्वारा तैयार की गई लकड़ी कई मायने में फायदेमंद है जैसे इसमें आग लगने की संभावना नहीं होती दूसरा ये स्टीलन से खराब नहीं होती और दिमाग भी नहीं लगती ये पानी से भी खराब नहीं होती है जो उपयोग लकड़ी के हो सकते हैं वो सब इसमें होती हैं लेकिन जलाने के उपयोग में इसे नहीं लाया जा सकता है 
वास्तविक लकड़ी की तुलना में लकड़ी कहीं ज्यादा मजबूत है ए द्वारा तैयार लकड़ी में 60 फीसदी कृषि और औद्योगिक अपशिष्ट मिलाया जाता है जबकि बाकी 40 फीसदी फाइबर मिलाया जाता है सी ने तकनीक का पेटेंट भी फाइल किया है दरअसल पंजाब हरियाणा में पराली के निपटान के लिए किसानों द्वारा उसे जलाया जाता है जिससे समूचे एन में प्रदूषण गंभीर रूप धारण कर चुका है इस प्रकार बिजली घरों की राख को बहा दिए जाने ऐसी वो जमीन को बंजर बना रही है मार्बल का कचरा भी जमीन और पर्यावरण के लिए खतरा बना हुआ है ये तकनीक इन तीनों समस्याओं का समाधान निकालती है इसके अलावा राष्ट्रीय वन एवं पर्यावरण नीति के तहत भी तकनीक का निर्माण बेहद अहम है जिसमें भवन निर्माण के लिए वैकल्पिक लकड़ी तैयार करने पर जोर दिया गया है जिससे वनों की कटाई कम हो सी एस आई आर एडवांस मटीरियल एंड प्रोसेस रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट इन शॉर्ट सी एस आई आर एम पी भोपाल टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर मेकिंग एवर ग्रीन हाइब्रिड प्लाई एंड कम्पोजिट वुड यूजिंग पराली एंड एग्रो वेस्ट दिस टेक्नोलॉजी वॉज डेवलप्ड विथ मल्टीपल ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर मल्टी फंक्शनल एप्लीकेशन एज वेल एज इन व्यू ऑफ एफेक्टिव यूज ऑफ पराली एंड एग्रो वेस्ट द फाइंडिंग्स ऑफ द रिसर्च पेज वेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस न्यू मटीरियल्स टू द सोसाइटी contributing to the national policy government of india for development of wood substitute for building application so that consumption of timber in building and house construction can be minimized furthermore this will be a potential solution for effective utilization of different agroves such as paddy straw wheat straw etc leading to solve various environmental threats associated with management of agro waste deforestation and ecological imbalance the evergreen hybrid ply and composite wood are durable resistant to weather corrosion water moisture and termite and fungal free composites the composite materials are fire retardant self extinguishing nature cost effective and maintenance free materials evergreen hybrid ply and composite wood has potential to use as an alternate material for wood timber plastic synthetic wood such as mdf board particle board and ply wood and all other conventional materials Used in furniture industry. AMPRI ने हाल ही में तकनीक को बाजार में उतारने के लिए भिलाई की कंपनी शुभ ग्रीन शीट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड को हस्तांतरित किया है कंपनी जल्द ही भिलाई में इसका उद्योग स्थापित करने जा रही है वैज्ञानिकों का दावा है कि ये प्लाई और लकड़ी बाजार में मौजूद प्लाई और लकड़ी से सस्ती होगी ए एम के निदेशक डॉक्टर अवनीश कुमार श्रीवास्तव ने कहा की ये प्लाई एवं लकड़ी मौजूदा उत्पादों का बेहतर विकल्प साबित होगी Another uh, translational research I want to inform you here, especially it's very important for the people who are in northeast region. The conversion of bamboo into bamboo composite, and this bamboo composite is the alternate of teak wood. You may not be able to read the properties what I have mentioned here on the screen, but the properties of the bamboo composite are either at par with the teak wood. or it's better than that in addition to that the you see the teak wood is a tree which is again a problem of cutting and teak wood uh, that tree it takes about 30 to 40 years to grow before uh, it is ready for use but the bamboo it is within the 3 to 4 years you is ready to cut so we have used that technology and made uh, bamboo composite it's a, a wood you can use and for it's very good for housing structure 
Ministry of Tourism, and so on. And one, first construction we have made at Ampri Bhopal itself. It's about 250 square foot area, committee room, and it is fully functional now. And this was again the, the foundation stone was laid down by Dr. Harshwadhan ji. So this is very good technology. It is already transferred. It is commercialized. Price list is, the, is in the market. And we are in good interaction with the Northeast people, especially Mizoram, Assam, and all, that this kind of technologies can be implemented. And it will also lead to employment in those areas. And about 80 to 90 percent people, those who are even less educated, can be employed. So employment generation, eco-friendly, and our own God-gifted bamboo can be used as a uh, bamboo composite alternate of teak wood. Then coming to metal, metallic uh, uh, materials, this is aluminum composite, uh, aluminum silicon alloy, um, silicon carbide composite. And this, this composite can replace your manhole. You know manhole, everybody has seen. And manhole, so far, it is being used by casting the iron. Now, that manhole, and come, if you compare with our this composite material, it is three times heavier. So transportation in our case, it is easy because it is one third of weight. It is cost effective and it has the improved thermal stability, better wear resistance, good corrosion resistance, and high temperature strength. So this is first time on 80th um, uh, year of uh, CSAR, we have uh, transferred this technology. And it has also come in 80 stories of CSAR in last 80 years of the findings of CSAR Technologies Compendium. Now coming to high impact science and technology development, this is also important because whatever materials we are developing, whatever science technology we are doing, we also need to think about the future, that what is the future technologies. And as I said, that 3D printing in Industry 4.0 is a very important aspect in manufacturing. We have used first time in the country making this graphene stainless steel composite. And this is better thermal exchanger. So it's good for automobile industries and so on. And we are the first in the country to publish these results in international journals of very high impact factor like additive manufacturing and material science and engineering. I'll show you some of the results related to electron microscope. This slide is blank, but it basically it shows the high resolution transmission electron microscope. And high resolution transmission electron microscope where the electron beam is the heart of the microscope. And you know how much time it takes for translational research. In 1897, the J.J. Thompson discovered the electron beam, electron. And first transmission electron microscope was built in 1931 only. And as of now, the transmission electron microscope has the point-to-point -point resolution of about 0.2 nanometer. But this is another unique product I am showing here, which shows scanning helium ion microscope. So in this case, you know, normal scanning electron microscope, we use electron beam. But here, instead of electron beam, helium ions are used. And now, by using that helium ions, the resolution has gone three times better. It is 0.34 nanometer. And this, this, this result I am showing, which is about 10 years old. And using graphene sheet, under this, using this helium ion, you can even do the nano patterning. And here you see Rashtri Bhautik Priyokshala on graphene nano sheet is written in the length of 100 nanometer. So, and the letter gapping is about 7 nanometer. So, such kind of precise measurements you can do using the helium ion microscope. And now, as I know, the first helium ion microscope, uh, the first uh, instrument has been already installed in India also, in Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory, Hyderabad. To encourage our young students, I must show this slide that even in electron microscopy field, still the Nobel Prize are given. This is the, these are the people, Jacobs, Joachim, and Richard. 
who received Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2017 for developing cryo-electron microscopy for the high-resolution structure determination of biomolecules in solution. Now, coming to our own discovery, in 1928, on 28th February, Sir C. V. Raman gave the concept and he analyzed the scattering of light, bond strength, and so on. And in 1930, he received the Nobel Prize. But since 1928, on 28th February, on which that day we also celebrate National Science Day, but we procured the Raman spectrometer from abroad. We spent so much money, we procured these instruments from abroad, and it is after only 94 years, uh, thanks to CSAR headquarters for sponsoring a, a project under public-private partnership to Ampri Bhopal and Messrs. Technos Instruments, that we have made the Raman spectrometers of high-end specification, which is at par with any international mark Raman spectrometer. Two models, as Professor Gagan Gupta mentioned, CTR-300 and CTR-150. And you will be happy to know that already two purchase orders our industry partner has received in this direction from CSIR Indian Institute of Chemical Biology and Maulana Ajad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. So in this regard, uh, I've already told, uh, this is first Make in India Raman spectrometer after about uh, a century that India has made. So these are the things need, make in India, made in India, if you really want to contribute something for making the country self-reliant. So in this regard, our uh, Honorable Director General President Dr. Rajesh Gokhale wrote a letter to several secretaries to the government of India. And uh, he mentions that even though the Raman effect was in invented in India in 1928, and awarded the first ever Nobel Prize in Science for any Asian in the year 1930. Nearly a century after the discovery in India, the country is still importing Raman spectrometers for use. Since the indigenous Raman spectrometers are now readily and commercially available in India, I therefore seek your kind intervention for wider publicity, circulation, due consideration in your department, organizations, purchase of Raman spectrometers before going for global tender inquiry. And this is already on GEM portal to, for the purchase of this through the industry. So this is contributing to Admirbar Bharat Avyan under economy, infrastructure, system, demography, demography sorry, and demand. I will not go line by line, but it's a real contribution towards making the country self-reliant. Now, we cannot escape nowadays any talk uh, without talking about COVID-19. We have done a lot of work in fight against COVID-19, and CSAR headquarters had made uh, five verticals, surveillance, diagnostics, drugs, hospital assistive devices, supply chain, to fight against COVID-19 for, for common man, and we contributed towards hospital assistive devices. So several masks, sanitizer, disinfectant boxes, 3D printed masks for doctors, and uh, various other products we developed these, these days. And we also collaborated with our sister lab, uh, CSIR Central Building Research Institute, and made first uh, makeshift clinic in Bhopal during the first wave of COVID, then second um, clinic we made in Devas, that is also in Madhya Pradesh. And third full-fledged hospital in third wave we made in Nandurbar. Again, is, uh, that is a tribes area in Maharashtra, 30-bed hospital with 10 ICU and uh, 20 non-ICU beds, and the hospital is under full function. So before going this slide, I'll just show you in brief what we have done during this COVID period. Uh, although this is um, old uh, video, but it will, it will give you just a uh, short feeling that uh, how we have contributed towards fighting against COVID-19.
CSIR Advanced Materials and Process Research Institute, in short, we call it CSIR MPRI at Bhopal, is one of the constituent labs of CSIR, that is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Under this uh, lab of uh, CSIR, that is at MPRI Bhopal, we work on lightweight materials, smart and functional materials, nanostructured materials, waste to value added materials. And these materials, in turn, they get converted into different outputs like publications, patents, and products, that is technology know-how transfers. It's a national lab of international repute. As far as COVID-19, this pandemic of coronavirus is concerned, we worked on different directions. Being an engineering lab, we try to do our best uh, using our capacity, efficiency, and the expertise of our scientific, technical, and non-technical manpower. We worked on knowledge generation, knowledge dissemination, industry interface, societal interaction, and innovative products. In terms of knowledge generation, we published uh, some very important papers in international journals, including even considering the nanomaterials of graphene, and we are the, probably the first in the world to publish in Science Reporter saying that can graphene can work as a protection material uh, against coronavirus. Other publications like on antimicrobial coating, biosensors, medicinal plants, and so on. Then we did knowledge dissemination, like organizing conferences, workshops, training the people, and also making aware how to protect yourself, how to prevent yourself from the COVID-19. We had these programs under Jigyasa, in, uh, teaching the school students, their parents, their teachers, their uh, deputy commissioners, principals, and under a skill development program, certain programs we have run. Then we interacted with society. In terms of uh, teaching them, or making aware how to protect themselves from coronavirus. In this case, we reached to more than 50 villages of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. We distributed our masks, sanitizer, soap, and posters, making them aware about the coronavirus, COVID-19. We also distributed our soaps, masks, then uh, sanitizer, and posters to of, uh, government officials like police personnel, bank officials, and common man. Then further, we worked on different products, technologies we are trying to develop, and we started with face mask and sanitizer with extra skin care. And this technology we transferred to a startup company in Indore, and I'm happy to tell you that face mask is already in the market. It's commercialized after lab testing. And sanitizer work is going on. In addition, we are working on to develop uh, different sanitizer boxes uh, with UV and nanomaterials, hybrid boxes, without UV with nanomaterials, hybrid boxes. We are developing some other products like some biosensors and so on. Then we are working on different other um, products like um, different high quality masks like uh, e-mask, travelogical mask herbal mask, graphene layer incorporated mask for different sectors of uh, the people, not only to common man, but even for doctors and other healthcare people. So in total, on different fields we are working. We are developing antimicrobial coating to protect ourselves from this COVID-19 coronavirus. And this coating can be used for uh, different metallic surfaces, and therefore, one can protect uh, ourselves. So in total, in five directions of knowledge generation, as I said, knowledge dissemination, societal inter interaction, industry interface, and um, innovative projects. In all these directions, our scientists, technical staff, non-technical staff, students, project fellows, we are working in one team. And we are also getting associated with um, CSAR as a whole. CSR as a whole also has five pillars where different directions they are working. And we are 
associated with uh, hospital assistive devices are five among five pillars of CSAR. With this, thank you very much. Jai Hind. Dhanyavad. So, um, in addition to that, we are working on um, to generate the skill among uh, uh, young students and uh, so-called future scientists, I should say. Starting from school level, CSAR Jigyasa program is for school children. CSAR Skill Initiative Development program for young researchers engineers, and faculty development program under artificial intelligence uh, sponsored by AICT. So these are the programs are going parallelly uh, in addition to the uh, fundamental research and transnational research which we are doing. And these are the glimpses of some of the programs we conducted uh, under CSAR Jigyasa. And uh, I'm happy to inform from this forum that uh, in last four to five years, we have reached more than one lakh students, faculties, their principals, deputy commissioners, assistants commissioners, and so on, during the programs conducted online and offline as well. We have published several books. This is a book on oxide nanostructures. Uh, you can go through, you can have a lot of idea how different products, devices can be made using oxide nanostructures. Um, then, uh, although we are engineering materials lab, but we became more cautious um, uh, during COVID, and we published books on advances in biomedical polymers and composites, Advance, and then the book on advanced materials from recycled waste, that is on waste to wealth, and advanced nanocarbon materials. So these kind of books uh, from the CRC Press and Elsevier, uh, this Taylor and Francis, these are the international publishers. They are publishing our books time to time. So in short, I will say that science and technology from lab to land, we are transferring, starting from fundamental research to applied research. Fundamental research goes into publications, applied research into patent, and the product, which, which is uh, technology. And that is real translational research from lab to land. We do using our these thrust areas like lightweight materials, nanomaterials, smart and functional materials, waste to wealth, and contribution contribution towards society development, and this all overall it contributes uh, in some form or other to make the country more and more self-reliant, Atmanirbhar Bharat, in terms of economy, demography, infrastructure, system and demand by, uh, by our technological innovations. So with this, I would I definitely like the statement of Honorable Prime Ministers, which he gave on 2nd March 2022, that science is universal, but technology must be local. Technology is for ease of living, for common man. With this uh, brief note and a, a um, message to all uh, young students who are listening this lecture that science and technology is the pillar of the country. For growth of any country, science and technology is the pillar. So we should always try to contribute in this direction. Aap sabhi ko Thank you all. Jigyasa, prashno ke liye sampar karein. For queries, contact please director at the rate ampri.res.in. Namaskar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shivasa, for a wonderful glimpse. Uh, today we really enjoyed a lot today's session. Dr. Shivasa, bahut maja aya. And viewers, you might have noticed that uh, uh, what Dr. Shivasa was talking about throughout his session, throughout his uh, deliberation, is a synergy between science and technology. Uh, Modi ji's statement has been elaborated by Dr. Srivastava, but there are different sayings as well. Science 
today's science, another uh, statement which goes hand in hand with all these things, which you are doing, in fact, at Empri, in fact, the whole CSIR is in it. Uh, the today's science is tomorrow's technology. The stop, it doesn't stop here itself, but you move ahead that the today's technology gives birth to the tomorrow's science. So you are working with the tunneling microscopes, scanning um, uh, electron microscopes, etc. Uh, here lies some questions which I have been receiving uh, from our viewers uh, through different modes. Uh, I will try to take up all those one by one. Let us see how much we can take. One particular statement that when you talk about scanning electron microscope, Dr. Shivasava, and then you talked about scanning helium ion microscope. Uh, in our school parallels, students often take helium nine, helium ion as an alpha particle, but you didn't use the word alpha particle. So, is it uh, the single ionized helium atom you are talking about, or uh, what is it? It's a helium ion beam which we use. Beam. So, it's not it, how different it is from alpha particle beam. It's, this it's, is the it's, question. It's not, alpha particle is a single particle. Here, the helium ion beam, when we talk. It has both wave and particle nature. True. That has, that is, this is that, the this is the basic uh, yes. uh, understanding before the definition. Yes. So uh, as far as I know, doctor, uh, viewers, this um, uh, here you use uh, not only alpha particles, which are doubly ionized helium atoms. Yeah. Here you use two he three, which are singly ionized helium atom. So uh, this is why we do not use it to be a uh, alpha particle here. Yes, it's a greater probe, probe because it has higher, much higher mass than an electron is concerned, and therefore it gives us more better resolution, more, more resolution, yes. more re better resolution. True. Um, another is uh, yes, uh, I must appreciate that you talked about the mechanical mechanical properties of the materials, particularly in and Ampere's contribution, particularly Ampere's contribution towards the uh, civil engineering structures, building materials, etc. You, uh, in between, you also you talked about thermal properties, thermal properties of materials with the graphene composite materials. Uh, you use the word aluminium silicon alloy uh, for as far as one question, one child is asking that aluminium. There is another set of composite material which is called aluminium magnesium alloys, yeah. which are much lighter in uh, uh, weight, much lighter in mass. So density is much lighter, but uh, the mechanical strengths are as good as what the iron has. So in fact, the future research is, uh, as we see in the journals, this is the child, these are the points which I am receiving from our children viewers here. Uh, many spacecrafts, hmm. many hmm. spacecrafts do use aluminum aluminum alloys hmm. uh, so that they can have lighter weight, but the same mechanical strength as the iron has. So uh, there has been emphasis of using aluminum magnesium alloys in our vehicles. Though you yeah. talked about uh, in the buildings, the, I mean, how far, how far India has moved ahead in this direction, or uh, what is the state of the art in this? See, direction? if you even if you see globally, first we started with steel because good strength and in all aspects good, but to, then we. Uh, move ahead to lightweight, high strength to re reduce our this fuel consumption. True. So, so lightweight alloys are important. So from steel, scientists have started doing working on aluminium alloys. Now in aluminium alloys, there is a series, aluminium lithium alloys, aluminium silicon alloy, aluminium magnesium alloy, and all those things. Now, but when, you, when it goes to the um, a real application, roadside application, when common man has to use. The, the property of the material has to be perfect from all directions, not only in terms of density or not only in terms of mechanical property. It has to have thermal stability. It has to have mechanical stability. It has to have uh, electrical, stability. electrical st stability, corrosion behavior, wear property. All those properties need to be optimized before it goes for application. Industry will not take up your material just because the, your material is good in one property. It has to be optimized. So that is why aluminum silicon based, silicon carbide, metal matrix composites, now it has come up, as I said 
one example of using that manhole cover. Another example, we are using this, uh, it is a, still under testing with Tata Motors to use as brag drum for any crash worthiness. You know that you use that bag, airbag. Airbag can also be replaced with this aluminum, aluminum. based foam, foaming material. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So airbag, when you add airbag in your car, uh, that company person will say it will cost another 50,000 to 1 lakh rupees. Yes. But when you use this aluminum based <coughs> foam, it will cost 4 to 5,000 rupees. Much lesser. That's Much better. lesser. So, so, and when there is, a, it should not happen, but in case any uh, crash happens, then airbag will also go and this will also go. You have to replace. So when you replace it, it will cost around only four to 5,000, or at the most 10,000. But airbag will cost about 50,000 to, 50, to 1 lakh rupees. So that is where a big advantage, cost effectiveness also comes into the picture. So that's great. You, uh, I mean, you are uh, making us acquainted with this modern researches and modern industrial researches. Uh, I am particularly uh, amazed to see and to, from your deliberations today, Dr. Chwasta, uh, that how the science is working in hand in hand with the industries, uh, the, trans, the transfers, the technology transfer, the knowledge transfer, research, the yes, translational yes, research. Yes, yes. You have mentioned these are yes, really amazing. Yes. Uh, you talked about uh, graphene mass. Uh, the question comes to our mind, to a layman's mind, how economical these are, number one. Number two, uh, does it really going to increase the life or the I mean the reusability of the mass? Because the normal kind of mass which we use have certain life. Uh, surgical masks are only for one time use. N95 for four or five days we can use with proper care. Uh, what about these graphene masks? Graphene mask also has got life. It is re reusable. And uh, graphene has also got antimicrobial activity. So using that concept, one can coat your um, a particular kind of uh, paper sheet uh, on that graphene. And we have tested it, and it is functioning very well. That's now uh, we are testing with the help of uh, Ames Bhopal also. Yes, you mentioned uh, Yes, it. yeah. So that work is going uh, on. Yes, uh, so graphene is a wonderful material. In fact, uh, I mean, so when the name graphene comes up, uh, when some anybody listen, uh, hears, the, hears the name of the graphene, many questions come up because it's very thin. Uh, I mean, even the thin sheets of, of say of 10 microns or so. Nano, are very strong. it's a nano scale. Nano, uh, uh, yes, even, you're right, even, nano scale. Yeah. Oh, so, what you are yeah. using in mass are the nanometers uh, graphene or? Uh, uh, that graphene deposition will be in nano scale only. Okay, okay. It will be on some sheet. Okay. okay. It's, it's still IPR issue. Uh, but uh, it is a sheet on that you coat this graphene layer. So what is the base material, sputtering material you use in this? Uh, graphene the, is the coating. Graphene is coating and gra base material is comfortable with your body. But it's an IP IPR issue, so okay, it's okay. a so that cannot be mentioned. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still no, no, no problem, no problem, yeah. no problem. We can understand these are IPR issues and we respect those. We respect those. Uh, uh, you took the name of uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences at Bhopal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned right in the beginning of your talk the roads you have uh, prototyped therein. Mm -hmm. Are these uh, associated with the uh, agro based materials or some plastic based as, as such? See, um, we converted fly ash, it's a waste of thermal power plants. Yes. It's uh, millions of tons fly ash comes out. So, using class F fly ash, it has got a particular composition and it is available in big amount. Uh, huge value in Hindalco, Nalco, Balco, all those companies. And that fly as using, uh, there is a particular uh, technique, geopolymeric technique. That you, you Yeah, this. using that, you convert it cement-free concrete. Now, when you use cement, suppose you produce one ton of cement, equal one ton of CO2 also you produce. Okay. So, equal amount of that CO2 goes to atmosphere, which you inhale. But in this case, when you convert fly ash into cement-free concrete, 80% reduction in CO2 emission. That's great. First thing. Second advantage is that it is waste to value-added material. You are converting waste to value-added. Now, when, you, when we use this material 
and uh, AMS Bhopal, we made a patch of that road, and it's functioning very well. And uh, I mean, it is giving much better uh, properties than the cement-free concrete, because parallel both the roads are there. And you know, sometimes need based research. COVID attracted us more towards at AMS Bhopal. We started working together, we signed MOU, to work on certain topics like disinfectant boxes, this mask, and many other things, even 3D, that dental thing also we are doing now. Yeah, those things we are doing. So we are having very close yes, collaboration yes, with yes, AIMS Bhopal. Yes, Simon, that is another area. We look for uh, uh, interventions of uh, CSIRs, MP, not only MP, but other laboratories of CSIR yes, sure. and other laboratories of Department of Atomic Energy, etc., yeah. in the country. Uh, now we are running short of time, sir. Uh, if you have one question, can you think that the scientists will be able to interrupt the scientists because of the time of their own time. One of the things that you have told about the work of the work of the work, I just want to know about it. Harish's name is his name. What is the work of the work of the work? Is it the start of the CSIR or the MPRI? And how can they participate in this? No, this is the start of the CSIR. And um, it's, I think, five years, more than five years completed mm -hmm. when uh, Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Human Resource Development at uh, that time, they, now both, Ministry of Education. Yeah, they yes. both signed MOU mm -hmm. uh, that uh, CSIR Jigyasa, this Jigyasa program will be run uh, under CSIR umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, encompassing using all 37 labs of CSIR. Okay, so we are also uh, one of the that entity, mm -hmm. and uh, based on your expertise, what expertise you have, based on that expertise, you run that program. So we have taken the charge of Madhya Pradesh, uh, Chhattisgarh, mm -hmm. and to some extent Odisha. Okay. So that is our responsibility That's great. to reach to Kendri Vidyalaya students and over the school students. That's great. And uh, by now, in last four to five years, we have reached more than one lakh students. That's great. I think that is the record. That's the great. Yes, CSIR. yes, that's yes. ISRO, some of the ISRO laboratories are also part yes, of this yes, Jigyasa yes, program. Yes. Particularly the PRL, Ahmedabad. Yes. yes and other yes, uh, yes, yes. solar observatories yes, of yes. the um, association. So we PRL conduct itself. online program yes, uh, because yes. of COVID, but again we have started this offline. Um, so they come to the institute, they see the instruments, and they get feeling of that instruments and facilities. Yes, absolutely. Dr. Abneesh, I think that your show, our show, our session, if I give it a waste to wow, it will be a lot better. Because this is a wow that we all want. The waste is a lot more in our lives. I think that we need to reduce it. We will also reduce it. We will also reduce it. We will also reduce it. As you can see, you have prepared a vehicle for a while. You can take it from a while. You can take it from a while. Dr. Gagan, I will ask you to conclude. Yes, thank you, Rahul. Uh, thank you, Dr. Srivastav. Uh, indeed, we thank uh, CSIR MP and Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Headquarters at New Delhi for collaborating with us in this uh, webinar series. We are doing it uh, with uh, viewers. You know that we are doing this series in collaboration with CSIR and Prabhas portal of the Government of India, which is governed by CSIR at this time. Uh, so we are going to come back to, uh, again to you, my dear friends, colleagues, and uh, on 12th of August, when we are going to have Professor Shali Mohan from the Indian Institute of Petroleum and Energy, which is another institute of national importance in India. Dr. Shali Mohan will be uh, with us in the studio, CIT studios, and he will be discussing about the geophysics, knowledge of depth, who bhot ki ek singhawa lokan. Shali Mohan is, uh, has been with the Indian Institute of Science, Indian School of Mines at Dhanbad for a long time. So, looking forward to meeting you again on 12th of August. Till then, bye. Namaskar. Namaskar.